News. All right, LSU football coming off the most explosive season in college football history from, uh, from an offensive standpoint. Number one pick in the draft, Heisman Trophy winner moving on. Royals Award winner and Joe Brady taking the offensive coordinator position at the Carolina Panthers to fill that spot. Scott Lenahan, who has served as a head coach for the St. Louis Rams in over 20 years of combined experience as an offensive coordinator in the NFL and at the collegiate level, came in to work alongside Steve, uh, Steve Insminger on the offensive side of the ball. Coach Ogeron, you've heard him here on OTB. He is very high on Coach Lenahan and what he can bring to the offensive side of the ball. We have not heard from Coach Linehan since he had been introduced as the passing game coordinator uh, a couple of weeks back, a couple of months ago uh, in February. Uh, and now he's stopping by here on Off the Bench, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. What a treat. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for the time. Good morning, guys. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, the Getting settled in Baton Rouge, how is, uh, how's it been getting down to a, a new place, a new city, and uh, finding a new home and, and getting to work? It's been great, you know. Um, I, I'll always remember it because uh, you know the uh, what's what's going on in the world right now. Because I've been yeah. trying to, you know, c- capture our our team and get the relationships with everybody. And we had to take that little hiatus for a while, but we we never stopped working. Uh, you guys know Coach O's work ethic, and uh, we were uh, you know we were zooming away uh, <laughs> and staying staying with it. But uh, we got a lot done before they we even had the. Uh, you know, the, the quarantine thing, because we, you know, we had probably the whole month of March, you know, they allow us to do our football schools and, and all that stuff. And then we got three good days of spring ball in. And so I'm getting a pretty good idea of what, uh, you know, what we have out there. And it looks great to me. When you had a chance to, to sit down and talk to coach Insminger and coach Ogeron going in to the job before they had named you to the position, I know it was a very quick process after they had that conversation um, with you in naming you to the position, um, what did you learn that they were looking for there in, in your initial conversations? Well, I, you know, it was a, uh, it was it's, it's tough. You lose a lot of uh, you lose a lot of of talent in you know to the draft, and you lose a couple good coaches that really did uh, some great things uh, in one year. Uh, so you've got to you know you got to sit back and say what are we what are we looking for? I think the number one thing was uh, you know. I, I had options to stay in the NFL, um, but there was like, you know, a handful, maybe a couple um, colleges that I would be like, you know, overjoyed to be a part of their program. And, you know, LSU was at the top and for, uh, you know, for whatever reason, has it, as it worked out, um, it was still, uh, it was still available by, uh, you know, by February. And just to be able to work with, with Steve, Coach O, I've, I've known him, uh, met him years ago. He worked for my, my, uh, my, first college coach Dennis Erickson down in Miami. And I'd mm. met him way back when in the early nineties when he was, was, uh, actually a grad, grad assistant, if I, uh, remember that right. And then, uh, I just did follow his career and I followed last season, just like everybody else admired, uh, you know, the greatest really, you know, record, maybe greatest football team in college football history. So, um, just want to be part of that. And, uh, you know, the, the thing about it, I've got, uh, you know, 30 years of coaching in the college and the NFL level. Um, and you know, I can continue to c- coach and just kind of grow, grow old gracefully or, or look at it differently. I looked at it more like I'm not old yet. I'm experienced. I think experience can, can add some value to a, to a, a great offense already here with Steve and the staff. Yeah. And, uh, the, this, you are so experienced at this point, Scott, that it seems like you'd be pretty unflappable, but is there any intimidation when you talk about taking over an offense that, statistically was the best ever the year before. And then like with that in mind, how do you balance, okay, we're going to keep this part of the scheme versus, well, this is how I think we should do things now. Well, you know, the, the best part about this is, you know, you know the offense coordinator is still here, you yeah. know, so Steve, knows, but he, he knows what it looks like. He knows what he wants. He knows the offensive staff and, and a large part is here as well. Um, so there's not going to be much change you know, to, to the, to the naked eye, uh, won't see uh, hardly anything, but there'll be some things every once in a while in a situation, uh, something that, uh, you know, works, works in the NFL. A lot of the NFL has a lot of trending things that people use and, and uh, no one did it better than, than LSU last year uh, using NFL concepts. And, uh, you know, I, I, I look at it like it's, there's no intimidation at all. I look at it like, you know, you want to be part of the, you know, a, a great system. And this system already uh, is great. I just want to add to it. Uh, you know, when I can, and I want to do the, 
do the best job I can to uh, continue exactly the same approach that uh, Steve, his vision, Coach O's vision, and, uh, you know, move ahead. We're going to have a lot of fun finding uh, guys to replace the guys we lost. To look at it like a reload, not a rebuild, and uh, we're, you know, think it's going to be a think it's going to be a great experience. And, and, and you, you mentioned Coach E's Endminger a, a few times here, Scott. And, and I was wondering if you could kind of take us into those meeting rooms. As you said, uh, you've probably got to work with the staff more than you have the actual players, like you'd want to ideally. But what's that? W- what is the vibe like in that offensive room in terms of collaboration and 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 getting this scheme down? What's it been with for you working with Coach Endminger? It's been great. You know, uh, Coach E is, uh, you know, I, I've, I've admired him from afar and never re- met him uh, personally one-on-one, but uh, knew of him well and have a lot of friends that had worked with him. And I just thought uh, it was amazing uh, what he was able to accomplish. And, you know, with the help of, uh, of, uh, of Joe coming in last year to put, put it together, really to kind of transform the system from, from 1998 to 1990. I'm, I mean, sorry, to, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to, to, 18 to 2019 uh, was the uh, was was just it, it was incredible and what I what I looked at was you know not just just that I looked at the uh, the staff um, you know James Craig is you know arguably in my mind the best old line coach in college football yeah. uh, you have to have that you have to have a coordinator like Steve and uh, a old line coach like James that's where, it, where that's where it starts because they see the vision they have to work together and then you add the uh, rest of the guys on the staff you know. Um, the, the biggest part of this is we're going to, we're going to keep the system the same. We're going to, we're going to keep this thing rolling. We're going to add some things that can, uh, that can benefit us with some of the new players, the guys that we're going to be focusing on and, uh, and take this thing and, and run with it. And, uh, you know, it's a great challenge. Um, but uh, you know, we're up to it and I know the players are. Don't feel bad coach before coach Ogeron got here the offense felt like it was about 1928 yeah i thought that's, I thought that's <laughs> what you were saying it, like, was, all, it was all good for that uh, late 90s attack to an actual modern day one coach uh, coach scott yeah, Lenahan, I, uh, back, I fell back in time there for a second <laughs> <laughs> lsu passing game coordinator scott Lenahan joining us here espn baton rouge new orleans alexandria I, I look at your resume man and look at some of the players randy moss in minnesota calvin johnson in detroit des bryant in Dallas, all those guys having career years with you calling plays for them. When you look at the talent on this offense of, of just the guys that you have to choose from, um, what do you see? I mean, it, it, last year's talent, all those guys were, were, are now off to the NFL. Uh, Jamar Chase is the best wide receiver in the game. You got a guy in Eric Gilbert who's the number one tight end in the country. When you see the weapons at your disposal, what do you see? I just see, you know, NFL players. You know, I, I go back to you know, picking, uh, you know, if I had to pick one or two colleges that I would go back to college and coach, you know, this, this is, this was the top because of the, the players that come out of here. Um, you know, when, when I was in the NFL for 17 years, we're evaluating players and we always, you know, there was always like extra time put into the LSU players, regardless of what the offense was, you know, 10 years ago or what, mm-hmm. what it was last year. There's always great players coming out of here. So I really look at it like an NFL, uh, like an NFL roster. I mean, it, you know, when you look at it, uh, I can see guys that are probably, you know, uh, 18, 19 years old that are going to be top picks one day. So it's fun to coach them at this stage of their careers, um, help develop these guys. Cause you know, that's a big thing. You know, uh, one of the things that really attracted me with, uh, Coach O was that, you know, we're, we're, we're about developing the players, you know, it's not just about recruiting great talent, which he's done. Uh, you know, th- there's, there's great talent, uh, around this building, but, uh, to, you know, be able to develop great talent is the, uh, is the most exciting part about this. And it'll be fun watching guys replace guys that had, you know, impact on, on this, uh, on this offense and this team uh, develop into the same role. We asked coach O about you a couple of times when he stops by here, and he's always talking about the impressive knowledge that you have on the offensive side and how you've already helped out with some of the relationships you had in recruiting. But one name he brings up is, is Eric Gilbert, because he says you guys talk about some of those big time wideouts like Bryant Moss Johnson, who you had to match up one-on-one when you see this incoming freshman, Ogeron will tell you he looks a little different. Um, what, what do you see when you see Gilbert working out, getting prepared for his freshman season in college football? Well, interesting. You know, he, um, you know, obviously a great talent, you know, top tight end coming out of uh, high school last year. Um, you just look at his, his, you know, his physical traits, and they're, they're all, you know, they, they're really all elite for his position. And, uh, you know, the guy's not just a, 
inline tight end or off the ball tight end. This is somebody you can move around. You can spread him out wide. I think he's going to be a matchup, uh, you know, a uh, nightmare for people as, as, as we, uh, as we progress, you know, he, he came into this thing this, this spring with, he had injured, injured his shoulder in a uh, all-star game. So we didn't really get to see him do anything physically yet, but, uh, you know, watching this high school tape, uh, you know, just seeing him uh, move around in a limited capacity, you can tell this kid's full of, uh, you know, great potential, and it'll be a lot of a lot of fun. So, you know, seeing you know going back to what I'm saying about developing these guys. This guy's already talented, but yeah. you know he's got uh, he's got some years of, of development ahead of him, and like to uh, you know see that be uh, you know um, happening here you know right away. So we, we look forward to seeing Eric Gilbert out there making great strides and, and great plays for our program. Talking to LSU passing game coordinator Scott Linehan here on Off the Bench, one of our 500 the 94.7 ESPN. Uh, Scott, we asked our listeners uh, if they had anything they wanted to ask you. Brandon Abair asking, uh, what do you see as your biggest obstacle this season? You know, um, I, I look at it more like a challenge. Uh, it's just replacing some, you know, key players in the in the offense. Obviously, we've got to replace, uh, you know, our starting quarterback, uh, one of our top two receivers, and our starting running back. And uh, you know, some old linemen are gone now, um, and so we've got we've got to. Uh, we've got to bring these guys along. It's not to, it's not a rebuild, you know. It's a reload, and we've we've got to get them get the right combination of uh, eleven uh, players out there, you know. And then there's going to be some really significant uh, role players within that, and uh, you know, establish that from the get go. I think probably if if you were going to you know say one obstacle right now is just not being able to be with players throughout the spring, and yeah. then, you know, it's unknown what's going on this summer. We hear some positive rumors out there that at some point we're going to get back together with them here and the not so distant future, but, you know, you know, zooming with them is not the same as working with them one-on-one. So, um, you know, that, that's a challenge that uh, all of us in the country face. So I guess it's equal playing field, but you know, that's, that's going to be the, that's going to be the, the challenge. I know the guys are up to it uh, is developing uh, and doing it in a hurry. Cause there's probably going to be a grace period before we play where they're going to say, okay, you got, you know, X amount of, weeks to uh get them ready and so we're gonna have to re uh recondition and and you know kind of uh rethink how we uh, approach the opening of the season without a uh without a true spring and and the summer's going to be a little bit a little bit weird so um you know but we're all in the same boat so we're looking forward to it our players are, are all all in on whatever they need to do so that's the that's the best part and, and and coach i mean you mentioned having to replace a quarterback and uh that those are the shoes that Miles Brennan is is stepping in to fill. Uh, what's it been like working with Brennan thus far? Well, you know, I, you know, I had a chance to be around him a lot. Um, I'm in the receiver room primarily, but you know, mm. obviously hand in hand with the passing game. You know, talking through it, Miles is very impressive. Um, he's really got you know some. He's really got some good experience. You know, he, he, he's 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 an older uh, guy to fill in um, going into ju- his junior year. Um, got some some good time last year. One of the uh, great things about last year was he got some really significant playing time, so you yeah. can see him on tape. And then uh, you just really see how he interacts with the with the team. You can see he's ready to take the reins. Uh, I think it's really good for you know backups to watch guys like like Joe throughout their uh, throughout their tenure, and you know they pick up things. You know I, I'm sure you know Aaron Rodgers got a lot from Brett Favre. Yeah sitting there watching him during his uh during his first couple of years in the league and so i think that'll benefit him in a, in a great way uh the fact that there's not a system change at all you know uh he's he he's recognizes what we're doing uh and he's and he's really uh he's really a bright kid picks up stuff right away any of the new things has a really good grasp of, of uh concepts and uh you know really impressed with how he throws it so i'm, I'm excited to see see what uh, miles can do We've already seen your relationships pay off in, in recruiting. Uh, how do you like that part of the job? You know, I really missed it. I, I didn't know if I would. Um, yeah. You know, these 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 young men are. are I've got three sons. Uh, two just graduated college recently. I've got one as a freshman in college, and uh, you know, so you know, I, I can I can relate to them. You know, um, you worry about a fifth. 56 year old guy, you know, talking to 18, 19 year olds, right. but you know what? I, I do it every day on a daily basis with my own. So, um, it's, it's, it's been fun. And I, I, I missed that part. You develop relationships with them. Uh, now it's, you know, it's, you know, things have changed with the, you know, technology, you know, you're doing everything not only on the phone, but face to face with, 
with zooming and skyping and all that stuff so that part's a bit different but uh but it's been it's been great i, I enjoy it and uh it, it's going to be fun as i as i uh, log in these uh these years in college that i'm i'm in uh, again and watch these guys develop and become you know become uh you know grown men and and, and hopefully move on to the nfl so, Coach, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the last time you were in college was what, we, we, like 20 years ago at Louisville, basically? Yeah, 2001. So, um, what, what was it like then going from, you know, thinking back to that point, coaching college football, and then you show up at LSU and you see these brand new facilities with like sleeping pods. You've got uh, yeah. a team of analysts to work with. Like, how much has the game evolved uh, while you took a 20-year trip to the NFL? Well, it has changed. You know, it's uh, you know the SEC um, is certainly ahead of the curve and on you know in most areas, probably all of them. But uh, just being able to see uh, you know what what you really have to do to keep up with Joneses, you know, and uh, you know back then, I mean, I'm not sure if I had a cell phone. It's probably one of those flip phones. <laughs> I, I, don't, I certainly couldn't text. I, I I don't know if I had caller ID. I don't remember any of that. But but now it's uh, it's it's about uh, it's about you know staying up with the technology and using it for for our benefit. And I think, you know, I've never seen a machine like this place when it comes to recruiting either. I mean, you know, we're 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 grinding away. We're coaching. We're, you know, coach he's got us in there. We're working on you know opponents and all this stuff. And then, bam, things stop for an hour. And you know, there's a, like a thousand coaches walking around this building. You know, handing phones and everything <laughs> to each other, talking to guys. So it's it's incredible. And that's why that's why the the talent is the is so fruitful here uh, you know to be honest with you um i don't think anyone's you know i've never been been around anyone that recruits like coach o and the staff so that that's going to be a, 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 a real fun part welcome to baton rouge coach thank you for uh, stopping by this morning thanks a lot guys yes sir you got it there he is lsu passing game coordinator scott Linehan checking here on off the bench